we are sun devils. You're going to die a sun devil. You know that? You all realize that? You are in a family, and you cannot get out. Back to throw. Plummer chased out of the pocket again. Plummer's going to run. Plummer's on the 10. Plummer's on the 5. He scores! He scores! He scores! If you want respect, you take respect right now. You ain't going to get respect if you don't take it right now. Frost gets the direct snap from center from the shotgun again. Frost is sacked in the end zone for a safety. Frost is sacked for a safety by Derek Rogers. One play at a time, one snap at a time, whatever. Just one at a time. It's basically just kind of focus on the task at hand. Go do this play the best you can and then let it go. Do it one at a time. Where are we right now and what is it we're doing? To some people it might sound too simple, but actually it's not. It's hard to do. But once you do it and you do it consistently, the wins just stack up. One at a time, Destination Pasadena, the official Arizona State University football highlight video, is presented by KTAR 620 AM, the first name in news. By Tribune Newspapers, serving the East Valley and Scottsdale. And by Fox Sports Arizona, home team, Fox Attitude. If ever there had been the smell of roses in the air around Tempe, it was at the start of the 1996 ASU Sun Devil season. Returning 43 of its top 47 players, the Devils ended the previous season hot, winning four of the last five. Riding the arm of sensational quarterback Jake Plummer, the offense returned the entire line and arguably the best receiving core in the Pac-10. The most improved effort would need to come from the Sun Devil defense. This year's team had one goal, one destination, Pasadena. To get there, they would have to do it one at a time. I knew it was going to be a special team with their work ethic in terms of coming into camp in great shape, very few outside problems. There were uh, uh, just the, the things that can surround a program that were that were a problem were not existing. It started off with a commitment to each other that we were going to be accountable to one another, we were going to do what we are coached to do, and we are going to follow Coach Leonard's one at a time credo as if it, was, if it was law. Just being around the guys during spring and summer workouts, you just feel it. Everyone uh, put so much effort into it, was here all summer, worked out real hard, ran and conditioned. We, we do a lot, so we knew coming out of camp that you know something good was going to happen. You never absolutely know until you get out there and play, but I think it was kind of in our minds during spring ball. We saw ourselves out there compared to other spring balls, and uh, you know you could just kind of tell there was a feeling. The chemistry was just there, so we knew once you know we got things rolling that uh, this was going to be an exciting year for us. I'm Tom Dillon, radio voice of the Sun Devils on KTAR 620 AM. With expectations at an all-time high, the 20th-ranked Sun Devils opened their first of five straight home games in front of a capacity crowd against Pac-10 powerhouse Washington. After scoring on their opening drive, the Sun Devils yielded 14 unanswered points before Jake Plummer went to work. Not finding a target downfield, the Snake scrambled seven yards to the Husky 33-yard line. A few plays later, he rolled out to hit the wide-open sophomore Ricky the Rocket Boyer with a 13-yard touchdown strike to tie it at 14, heading to halftime. After falling behind 21-14 in the third, junior Michael Martin capped a 10-play, 58-yard drive with a one-yard touchdown plunge. Martin finished with a team-high 92 yards rushing on 20 carries. A three-and-out for the Huskies on the next possession led to one of the season's most memorable plays courtesy of freshman J.R. Redmond. Taking the ball at the 40, Redmond fought off four tacklers before he fumbled the ball at the Husky three-yard line. But senior Isaiah Mustafa fell on the ball and rolled into the end zone, giving ASU the lead at 28-21, bringing the crowd at sweltering Sun Devil Stadium to its feet. Early in the fourth, backup tailback junior Terry Battle built on the Sun Devil lead with a seven-yard run. The Devils later tacked on another score to increase the lead to 42-21. But the Huskies fired back, scoring three touchdowns in less than four minutes behind backup quarterback Brock Heward. 
I don't know that we, maybe we relaxed, we thought the game was over, and they got a little momentum, and so it, the momentum swung. Heward then hit Gerald Harris with a 67-yard bomb to cut the Devil lead to just seven points. After a Terry Battle fumble on the ensuing kickoff, Corey Dillon tied the score at 42 with just over five minutes remaining, leaving Coach Snyder with a feeling of deja vu of last season's fourth quarter collapse against the Huskies. With an interception on the previous possession, Plummer bounced back to masterfully orchestrate the Sun Devil hurry up offense. First, hitting sophomore Lindsey Jackson for a 30-yard gain. Then, with just 22 seconds left, he hit Michael Martin to bring ASU into field goal range. At that point, I realized hey, it could come down to a field goal to win this game. and. I just, you know, I was stayed relaxed on the sideline waiting to see, you know, what happened. What happened was the expectations of a breakthrough season would now rest on the foot of junior Robert Neese. 38-yard field goal attempt in a 42 all-time. Robert Neese, the junior from Bakersfield. The snap a bit high. The ball is down. The kick is away. It is long enough, and it is good. A lot of pressure on us, a lot of pressure by the, by the community and by the media. This was the biggest game in 10 years, da 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 da, -da. There was a new noose around everybody's neck on the program, and the kids went out there and played hard and well. Right then I said, we, we, we're, we're going to be a fine team. If we win the one that one, um, you know, the season could have took a whole different turn. That was something where the offense was doing their job and we weren't. And uh, we were all kind of embarrassed about that. You know, after the game, we won. But, I mean, it shouldn't have been that close. So I think, I think it was probably a good thing because it got us focused and more motivated for the games to come. After narrowly escaping the season opener, the Sun Devils looked to boost their confidence against the outmatched Eagles of North Texas. After being non-existent in the Washington game, the plumber to pool connection struck early and often, beginning in the first quarter, with a seven-yard touchdown to begin the fireworks. The ASU defense, led by junior college transfer rush end Derek Rogers, looked to redeem itself after its poor fourth quarter performance the previous week. The 25-year-old U.S. Air Force medical technician dissected the Eagle offense, recording three tackles and two sacks, and appeared to be fitting well into Coach Phil Snow's defensive set. Derek came in, and, and, and as everybody can, you know, has seen, he's done a great job. He's, he's athletic, he loves football, he works hard, and he's made a lot of big plays for us this year at that position. I really didn't know much about the defense when, I, when the season started. Uh, I found out more about the, the individual players as the season went on, you know, as far as the character and as far as the desire and the will to win. He has a lot of energy, and I think he gets a lot of other guys going, and, he, and he's always playing as hard as as hard as he can. Play action fake. Palmer winds up, goes deep to Keith Poole. He's got it at the 15 and he's going and he's going and he scores. <laughs> Leading 31 to seven, Vince Amy's 24 yard interception return for a touchdown highlighted the Devils defensive domination, which held the Eagles to 128 total yards. Amy's score was the second defensive touchdown of the game. The first time they had achieved that feat in 13 years. Keith Poole's fourth touchdown put an exclamation point on the 52-7 route, the largest margin of victory since the 86 Rose Bowl season. I don't think that was a giant confidence booster for us. So we weren't too flattered with ourselves after that, you know, because we beat them like that. But I think it was the next three or four games where we did finally start to kind of get our groove going. Respect was the name of the game when the top-ranked defending national champions invaded newly dedicated Frank Cush Field. After getting pounded 77 to 28 a year ago, ASU wasn't looking to keep it close. They were looking to win. The Sun Devils were sharp from the get-go as Jake Plummer led a flawless opening drive. The statement was made, and the two-time national champs were back on their heels. Now he throws it back in the middle of the field to a wide-open pool. He's got it. He scores. 
um, they were just in shock, and I knew we could beat them. It just seemed it seemed easy at the time. Easy kept getting easier for the Sun Devils. Green fumbles it into the end zone, and he fumbles it again in the end zone, and he fumbles it again in the end zone, and it goes out of bounds on the far side of the field. It's a safety. It's Arizona State getting the two points, and they'll get the ball as Green drop kicks it out of the end zone. We decided we were going to put the game in Scott Frost's hands, uh, make him decide what to do during the game. We knew he was uh, kind of young and new at the system, and if we could make him make all the decisions, then uh, we pretty much had everything in our favor. Frost appeared frazzled all evening, and his inexperience showed early and often. The junior's wild pitch killed the Cornhusker drive and swung the momentum back onto the Sun Devil side and put the ball into the hot hands of Jake Plummer. The snake took to the air and marched his team into Nebraska territory. He relied on short pass patterns, spreading the ball to his speedy arsenal of receivers. The Sun Devils were on the verge of another score, and it was first and goal at the five. We knew that we weren't going to get guys wide open in the middle of the field running for long ways, but we knew we could get guys open. And uh, you know, Lindsey Jackson stepped up big time that game, made a, made a name for himself. And we just we executed well on offense, and the defense kept us in it. Nebraska's tough defense stepped it up in the red zone, forcing the Sun Devils to settle for a field goal, making the score 12-0 ASU. Frost hits the ball, snapped by him. It's back inside the five. It's in the end zone. He's down for another safety. He's down for another safety. As the crowd was making so much noise that the center didn't hear the starting count, he snapped the ball right by Frost into the end zone. Tom Osborne was shocked. And just as easy as the Sun Devils' defense was putting points on the board, the offensive attack was having its way on its side of the ball. We moved the ball really effectively against them, which was something a lot of people haven't been able to do. Here's the snap. The kick is on the way. It's got the leg, and it is good! Robert Neese's 44-yard field goal stretched the lead to 17 to nothing late in the second quarter. Derek Rogers made sure that the Nebraska offense was held in check and kept the first half shutout of the national champs intact. The third quarter proved to be much of the same as the ASU defensive scheme continued to work to perfection. The one thing everybody talks about the scheme we used against Nebraska, a lot of people have tried that. The scheme wasn't the issue, it was the players running the scheme. And, and our guys came in here they were not intimidated by Nebraska. Defensively, we, did, we had an excellent scheme. All, my, all the credit, in my opinion, goes to Coach Snow and all the guys that did that. Uh, we went out there, you know, we had to play, too. We came out there and we hit, and, uh, you know, things just worked out real good. The national champs were shell-shocked with a barrage of hard hits, the likes of which they hadn't seen in years. Tom Osborne and his unbeatable Huskers were on the brink of losing their first regular season game in three years. Frost gets the direct snap from center from the shotgun again. Frost is sacked in the end zone for a safety. Frost is sacked for a safety. Basically, we just got after them. We were really intense, and we kicked their ass. Uh, just physically beat them up, and they, they didn't want any, any part of that football game. The 19 to nothing shutout knocked Nebraska from number one and catapulted the Sun Devils into the national spotlight. This team has never given me a reason to doubt that they're going to be ready to play and that they're going to play until they win the game. ASU moved to 3-0 for the first time in 14 years, one at a time. The now sixth-ranked Sun Devils were warily guarding against a letdown the whole week before the game against Oregon. It would prove to be as important as the game against Nebraska. Plummer loops it into the end zone and is caught for the touchdown by Kendrick Bates. He scores. The Devils' defense was again ready to play. And with Sean Sueda and Pat Tillman leading the way, the D shut the Ducks' running game down early. Michael Martin, who rushed for a career-high 163 yards, repeatedly punished Oregon's defensive front and took it deep into Duck territory, setting up this 17-yard touchdown pass from Jake Plummer to Lindsey Jackson, who broke free in the corner of the end zone for his first touchdown of the year. The Jackson score was the first of four Plummer TD passes on the day, matching his career high. J.R. Redmond in the ball game. Plummer rolls out right and throws back to Redmond out of the backfield. He's wide open at the 30. He's on the 20. He's going. He's going. He scores. <laughs> Leading 27 to 10 in the third quarter, the Devils' defense refused to break and stopped the Ducks cold at the goal line, forcing them to settle for a short field goal. 
The rush D was solid all day, giving up only 63 total rushing yards. Terry battled and broke the game open with this incredible 21-yard touchdown run. The potent one-two tailback combo of Battle and Martin racked up 246 yards and two touchdowns. Ducks at the Devil 26, the pass for Parker, far side of the field is going to be intercepted over there on the far side. After yielding over 400 yards passing from Ducks quarterback Ryan Perry Smith, the Sun Devils finally were able to contain him with back-to-back -back interceptions by Pat Tillman and Derek Smith. Leading 34-20, ASU was looking to put the final nail in the Oregon coffin, and Jake Plummer was looking to rewrite the record books. With 21 completions on the day, the Snake became the all-time completions leader in ASU history. Battle's second long touchdown run made the final score 48-27, giving the Sun Devils a 4-0 record, 2-0 in the Pac-10. When we beat Oregon, I knew that we were not going to be a moody team. We we're not going to be subject to uh, real downs or real highs. We're going to get ready to play. And, and we have all season long. We've been just terrific that way. No one thought we'd come back and beat Oregon. They thought we'd fall flat on our faces and, and play flat. But we came out and killed Oregon. And it's been that way all season long. You know, we've come, come from you know, people not giving us much respect. We've come together in, in big games and been, been able to win them. The Sun Devils were looking for a breather against Boise State, who were spending their first year in Division 1A. But the Broncos didn't appear impressed with the 4-0 Devils. And now it goes deep down the middle of the field to a wide open Horace. He's got it. He scores. The early touchdown may have given the Broncos some false confidence, but it only fired up the Devil offense, who reeled off 42 straight points before halftime. The 10, he's on the 5. He breaks a tackle. He drives to the goal line. Is he in there? He's in. He scores. ASU's first half explosion was highlighted by 398 yards total offense and two Terry Battle touchdowns. The Maroon Monsoon shut out the Broncos the rest of the way, surrendering only 68 yards rushing all game. Playing at only two quarters before giving way to backup Steve Campbell, Boise native Jake Plummer crushed his hometown team with two touchdowns in the air and one on the ground. The final score was ASU 56, Boise State 7. It took us a little bit to get on track. I think we weren't, you know, really up for the game. But um, you know, once we got started, we were able to move the ball and score enough points. And uh, it was a big thing for a lot of people back home. But you know, for me, I mean, I, I was a Boise State fan when I was younger. But you know, growing up, I wasn't. With a 5-0 record and a gaudy number four ranking, the Sun Devils headed to the Rose Bowl for their first road game of the season against UCLA. The Bruins drew first blood when Cade McNown connected with Todd McBride on an 11-yard touchdown toss. The Devils would answer on the ensuing kickoff, and that answer was wearing number eight. And Andover ends at the battle side of the field. He's got it on the two. He's out to the five. He's running to the near side of the field on the 15. He's around the corner on the 20, out to the 30. He's on the 40. He's going to go all the way. He's on the midfield stripe. He is going. He is going. He is going. He scores. 98 yards for Terry Battle. With the score tied at seven, the Devils would dig deep into their bag of tricks. But Ricky Boyer's failed halfback option pass would prove costly twofold. The interception snuffed out the Sun Devil drive. Even more costly was the devastating injury sustained by starting tailback Michael Martin on the run back. After the game, it was revealed that Martin fractured a vertebrae in his neck and would be sidelined for the rest of the season. Here's the play action fake, and McNown throws it deep. He's got a man wide open at the 20. He's on the 10. He scores on the far side of the field. The Bruins then scored three straight touchdowns, taking a 28-14 lead into intermission, marking the first time the Devils had trailed at halftime. I've had some teams in the past that would have folded and said, well, this is not our day. Geez, we're having a bad day. And we went inside at halftime, and we kind of settled everybody down and said, let's go play the second half one snap at a time and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Plummer going deep, far side of the field for Poole. He's got it. He scores! 
The second plumber to pool TD connection of the day cut the UCLA lead to seven. The game that I had the most fun in was the UCLA game. Something about that game, I don't know because it was so close, we kind of kept coming back. I don't know what it was, it was kind of like this. I had a blast. It was just a fun game. That was a good game to play football. Skip Hicks increased the lead to 13 points. His 114 yards made him the first back this season to rush for over 100 yards against the Devils. Plummer to throw again. Near side of the field for Kenny Mitchell. He's got it! He scores! The Kenny Mitchell touchdown brought the Devils within six, and after Hicks fumbled, ASU had the ball deep in Bruin territory and looked to take the lead. What happened next could have been the defining play for the Devils this season. Tailback J.R. Redmond took a pitch and threw the ball back across the field to Plummer, who slithered his way into the end zone and gave the Devils their first lead of the day. Jake would later find his way into the end zone again, securing the Sun Devils' sixth straight victory. On the day, Plummer hit pay dirt five times, throwing for three, running for one, and catching another, capping a 42-34 victory. It seems a legend was born. It was just a huge game, a, a dramatic comeback, a lot of energy spent, but when we were leaving the stadium, everyone in the offensive bus, at least, we all looked back and, and you know, said, hey, let's get back here, let's get back to the Rose Bowl in 97. And, Jake the Snake Mania was now rampant across the desert, and his name was being tossed around in the same sentence as the Heisman. The Snake had hit the big time. Nothing on earth that'll get us going like Jake Plummer's throwing. Everyone knows when the snake drops back in the broad daylight that an ASU win is always in sight. And everything's right when Jake Plummer's throwing. We're the first one standing in line. We're taking the Sun Devils, looks like Rose Bowl time. We're taking off our hats for the ASU boys. Got that old brewing monkey off their back. All we want is a Rose Bowl bed. Coach Snyder's got them back on track. How about a Heisman Trophy for a quarterback? Nothing on earth that'll get us going when Jake Plummer's throwing when the snake drops back in the broad daylight that an ASU win is always in sight and everything's right when Jake Plummer's throwing we're the first one standing in line for Jake in the sun that looks like Rose Bowl time Plummer again wants the end zone this time he's got it touchdown Arizona State well, Kenny Mitchell he wants to throw back to Plummer he's open got it at the 10 the snake looking for Devils returned home to the largest crowd ever at Sun Devil Stadium. After the game of his career against UCLA, Plummer may have been still recovering from the roller coaster victory in Pasadena. Looks down the middle and throws down the middle, and the pass is intercepted. It's off the hand of the tight end. To the near side comes Chris Claiborne at the 40, back to the 35 yard line, bounces off of a couple of tacklers, and he's not going to bounce. USC capitalized on plumber interceptions on the first two Sun Devil drives, jumping out 14 to nothing. He came up to us after the second one and said, I'm going to bounce back. That's my fault. It won't happen again. He goes, I shortchanged you guys, but OK, I got those out. Now let's go play some football. He, he doesn't need anyone to tell him anything. He's the most self-motivated person I've ever seen. After the two quick scores, the Devil defense shut down the Trojan offense, allowing only two first downs and 50 yards the remainder of the half giving Jake a chance to get the offense back on track. The offense kind of, you know, let me get into my sink and let me get going. And once we did, we were able to move the ball and go on a couple long drives that were key. With Martin out, Terry Battle got the start and exploded through the middle for a 32-yard score. He scores! Nobody touched him! Well, I was excited, but I was also nervous on the other hand. Um, you know, being my first start in my college career, I was real nervous, but, you know, I had a lot of teammates tell me, you know, just be patient, you know, um, relax, and everything's going to be fine. Just play, you know, like you usually play. Battle racked up over 100 yards and two touchdowns in the first half alone, tying it up at 14 going to halftime. After a scoreless third quarter, USC capitalized on a blown call as referees signaled this obvious incompletion, a touchdown, handing the Trojans a 21-14 lead. 
Unfazed, Plummer marched the Devils down the field and capped off a 98-yard drive with this 21-yard strike to tight end Steve Bush, nodding the game at 21. Bush ended the day with seven receptions for 78 yards in his first game back since sustaining a knee injury against Nebraska. Freshman R.J. Soward then silenced the Sun Devil fans, returning the ensuing kickoff 98 yards, again putting the Trojans on top. With just a minute 30 left on the clock, Battle rumbled his way into the end zone for a seven-yard score, tying the game and forcing overtime. Trojan quarterback Brad Otten beat blitzing free safety Mitchell Friedman, hitting Rodney Sermons for a touchdown. Finding himself trailing for the fourth time in the game, Plummer looked to his main target. Poole comes in motion toward the middle of the field. Plummer hands the ball off. No, he rolls right, and he throws it in the end zone for Poole, and he's got it, he scores! When we need it big time in the third or fourth quarter, he seems to be the man who's always getting, getting his hands on the ball and doing big things for him. Then, on a first down play action, Battle found daylight and a quick six. Back to the 10, back to the 5, he scores on the first play! SC bit on the play action again, and that time Battle stopped for a second and then sprinted 25 yards. Third down and seven, Otten to throw again. Otten is, throws it away. He's sacked, and he throws the ball away. And the Sun Devils, they have not blown the whistle. The Sun Devils have it, and he's going to score, and the Sun Devils win. After 77 total points, over 800 yards total offense, and two overtimes, the Sun Devil defense finally sealed the victory and moved ASU to a perfect 7-0. After surviving two consecutive fourth quarter nail biters, the Sun Devils looked to get back on track early against Stanford and avenge last year's two-point loss at Sun Devil Stadium. The Devil defense set the tone by shutting down the Stanford ground attack and constantly harassed quarterback Chad Hutchinson. Following a Scott Bondarahi interception, the Snake escaped two would-be tacklers and found J.R. Redmond for the game's opening score. Well, I would just assess him kind of like a, a transmission in the vehicle. The vehicle doesn't run without transmission. You need that person. You need something to twist the gears and make the car run. That's Jake Plummer. Pinned deep in ASU territory, Plummer continued to pick apart the Cardinals' secondary, finding Keith Poole for a 36-yard play. A balanced Sun Devil offense, which was averaging close to 500 total yards per game, racked up 498 yards on the day. Terry Battle's 21-yard gain set up a Plummer 17-yard bullet to Lindsey Jackson. Plummer dropping back, looking right, throws right. The ball's caught by Jackson in the end zone. He's got it. He scores. Still in the first, up 14 to nothing. Defensive end Aubrey Battle forced a Chad Hutchinson fumble, allowing Pat Tillman to recover on the Stanford 18-yard line. A 13-yard pool reception set up Battle's five-yard TD run, tallying the Sun Devils' largest first-quarter point output for the season. Poole continued to take advantage of poor man coverage by the Cardinals' secondary, pulling down a career-high 10 catches, totaling 161 yards. I played great against Washington, and I didn't get a ball. And, and the Stanford game, I, you know, played the same, and I got a lot of balls. It's just where, where Jake's looking and how the defense is running and stuff. So it's just how a game is and, and what happens. If, if, and he felt I was catching the ball well and getting open, so he, he was looking for me a little more in that game. Jeff Polk's one-yard TD started the second half scoring, and after a Courtney Jackson interception, Plummer scrambled for four yards to extend the Sun Devil lead to 35-9. to nine. He's a great leader. We really appreciate him out there. And, um, you know, he knows what, when, when he's third and six, he knows what to do. You know, he scrambles or he'll, he'll dump it off. It doesn't matter. The Sun Devil defense continued to bring the heat and agitate the Cardinal offense. The Devil D picked off three balls, and junior Pat Tillman added an interception to his eight tackles, two of which were for losses. Robert Neese added two field goals to make the score 41-9, where it would stay. For the fourth time this season, the Devil defense held the opponent scoreless in the second half, and more significantly, at 5-0 in Pac-10 play and 8-0 overall, the Sun Devils kept themselves in the driver's seat for the Rose Bowl. Ah! 
After capturing their first eight games of the season, the last thing that the Sun Devils wanted to do was suffer a letdown. And the sight of facing the once victorious Oregon State Beavers didn't exactly strike fear into the nation's fourth ranked team. The ASU offense easily moved the ball downfield in the first half. And this long gainer to tight end Steve Bush moved the ball into the red zone. But Jake and the boys couldn't punch it in and had to settle for three Robert Neese field goals. The Sun Devil defense was knocked back as the Beavers pounded out two touchdowns and 285 first half rushing yards en route to a 14 9 lead as the teams went into halftime. The Sun Devils were looking for a spark and got one once they came out of the locker room. And over in and deep to the far side of the field. Battle, who got his eyes right into the sun at the last second, fields it on the goal line, out to the 20. Battle to the 30. Battle to the 35. Battle to the 40. Battles in a foot race in the midfield stripe. Battles on the 40. He's going. He's going. He's going. He scores. The 100-yard return was Terry Battle's second of the season and a new ASU record. His heroic swung the momentum onto the side of the Devils, and it would never leave them. The tide had turned. An energized defense showed up in the second half, and after being embarrassed for the first two quarters, the Devil D was relentless in their ground pursuit, giving up only 64 total yards after halftime. Battle's big day was far from over, as he constantly blasted through the Beaver defensive front, and his 190 yards rushing was a new career high. Terry stepped up, and it would step up and have some big runs and score some touchdowns, and it's just nice to have that balance, because then all the weight's not on my shoulders and the line's shoulders to, to block, you know, for three, four seconds every play. Uh, it just becomes, you know, give it to Terry, get a hole for him, and when he gets out in the open, he, his speed will help, will, you know, keep him away from the defenders. Once ASU figured out how to stop the option, the Beavers had to air it out, a philosophy they do not exactly embrace. And quarterback Tim Alexander was constantly under duress and was picked off by Damian Richardson, who returned the ball all the way to the two-yard line. Terry Battle's two-yard plunge made the final 29-14 as touchdown Terry's 317 all-purpose yards broke the existing school record. I like Oregon State game because of the all-purpose, you know, play that I was doing, like the kickoff returns and the 190 yards rushing and catching out of the backfield. I think that was the game that I was more utilized as a complete back than any other you know, game. Nine games into the season, the undefeated and undaunted Sun Devils had a date with destiny against California. A win would clear the path of Roses to Pasadena, and before another record crowd of almost 75,000 fans at Sun Devil Stadium, Derek Rogers and the defense set the tone early, as number 59 registered one of his four and a half sacks of Cal quarterback Pat Barnes. Then, the ASU offense took over the game. Now Holt gets it right here, no battle will. Turns it left, turns it right, turns it left again. He's on the 20, he's on the 10, he's on the 5, he scores! Terry Battle's two second quarter touchdowns put the Devils out in front and they never looked back. The Maroon Monsoon held the Golden Bears to five yards rushing for the entire game and shut them out of the end zone after the first quarter. Pat Barnes will drop back to throw. California's starting to run out of time and he runs out of the pocket. Now he's going to get grabbed back inside the 20 and he's sacked at the 16 yard line by Derek Rogers who refused to let him get out of his sight. Leading 21 to seven heading into the final period. Jake Plummer wanted to put away any thoughts about a Cal comeback and hit a streaking J.R. Redmond for 42 yards. Plummer completed 10 of 18 passes on the day to seven different receivers. Plummer looks over that California defense, give it to Battle, steps to the line of scrimmage and scores again! Battle's fourth touchdown of the game increased the lead to 28 to seven and started the countdown to Pasadena. Redmond then scampered 42 yards down to the Cal 8 and scored a few plays later. He rushed for 68 yards on nine carries, second only to Battle's team high 165 yards. It was only fitting that Derek Rogers ended the 35 to seven waxing of Cal with a sack, sending the record crowd into a rose fevered frenzy. And with 21 seconds remaining in the game, the goalposts came down and the game was called. The Sun Devils were going to Pasadena. It was very nice clinching, clinching the Rose Bowl. I remember coming back in and, and celebrating in, the, in the, the weight room after the game and holding roses and then jumping around and we were real happy. And uh, we know that 
hey, it's, it's a game that clinches the Rose Bowl for us, but to go to the Rose Bowl 10 and one, it wouldn't have been that fun. With the trip to Pasadena already locked up, the Arizona State football team had one more score to settle before it headed to the Rose Bowl. As seen on Fox Sports Arizona, the Sun Devils came out smoking and pounded the Arizona Wildcats into submission. ASU had lost three straight and 11 out of the last 14 to Arizona, but this year would be different. The snake was in rare form from the get-go, scrambling for 24 yards en route to his season-high 60 yards rushing. Terry Battle, who passed the 1,000-yard mark rushing for the season, started the onslaught with a 20-yard touchdown run late in the first quarter. After Arizona got the ball back, they found themselves with a third and 31 after a penalty. They tried a quick kick, but Sean Sueda jammed the Arizona blocker into the path of the putter, and the ball was recovered by, who else, but Derek Rogers at the Wildcat 5. Two plays later, Battle scored his second touchdown of the game with a two-yard run, and the lead was 14 to nothing. The Sun Devils were rolling. From the offset eye, second down and four. Here's the counter to Polk. Trying to sprint to the outside. He's 35. He's to the 40. Polk in the midfield stripe. Polk's on the 40. Polk's at the 35 to the 30. And he's knocked down on the far side of the field. After Jeff Polk's big run, Plummer then hit Keith Poole with a 27-yard touchdown. The plumber pool connection hit the end zone 11 times this season. We have a good relationship. I mean, as a quarterback and receiver, you got to have a good relationship. You know, we've been playing with each other for a while now, and we know how he knows where I'm going to be, and I know he's going to be looking for me and stuff. So we, we have confidence in each other, and, and that helps out. Ethan comes in motion across the formation. Smith rolls out to his left. Smith stops. Smith is grabbed. Smith is thrown for a loss. They've literally beat up every opponent they've played. There's just some great people on that defense who know how to put a hit on somebody. Juan Roque and his offensive line mates also know how to put a hit on their opposition and keep the heat off Jake Plummer, who hits Poole with another long bomb and sets up yet another Terry Battle touchdown, giving him a school record 20 on the season, making it a 28-7 Sun Devil lead. A lot of people thought they was going to come and upset us and all that, but um, I think, you know, just going down there and just thrashing them like we did at their home field. That was the biggest thrill for a lot of us. The second half was more of the same as the Sun Devils trampled the Wildcats into the Tucson turf. The defense kept hitting, and Arizona's Kevin Smith probably wished he was someplace else. The offense kept clicking behind Plummer and Poole, who hooked up four times for 123 yards and two touchdowns. The most fun game I've ever been in, been involved with. It was just the end of the year. We had never beaten them. I had never beaten them when I was on the field. Uh, it was, you know, rivalry, big time rivalry, and the team, we just had a good time together. And the good times continued to roll in the fourth quarter as redshirt sophomore Marlon Farlow scored twice to go along with an impressive 93 yards rushing on the day. The 56 to 14 final score was ASU's most lopsided win over Arizona in 48 years. We could have more points than 56. And to go into somebody's, you know, Arizona's got a lot of pride and the plan at their place. I thought that was significant, particularly the fact that we had already run the championship. Boy, our team went down there and it clicked. Boy, we were, like I say, we could have, it, it was really one-sided football game. After not having played a game in over a month, the Sun Devils hopped a plane on Christmas Day to Pasadena. The granddaddy of them all awaited. But before their showdown with Ohio State on New Year's Day, they would have to survive beef bowls, interviews, amusement parks, and more interviews. Come off the plane and breathe in the smog and you realize you're in L.A. again.
Devils! With the press conferences and hoopla behind him, it was game time. This one was more than just a Rose Bowl. This one was for a possible national championship. This one was for immortality. If you want respect, you take respect right now. You ain't going to get respect if you don't take it right now. Why? What has happened that makes this team different than all the others? It's your attitude. It's your attitude about how to play the game. You understand winning, okay? You understand winning. We are Sun Devil. You're gonna die a Sun Devil, you know that? Y'all realize that? You are in a family and you cannot get out. You're in a family and no getting out. Hey, you're a great group. You have the best seniors. You have the best captains. You got the best coaching staff, I've got the best coaching staff. Okay? Stay within your personality. <coughs> Just play them. Ignore, I don't even care who we play. Does it matter to anybody? No, no, no. I don't care who they say. They could have seen the Chicago Bears. Okay? Doesn't matter. It's not your match. Okay? Play with class. Play with class. And I've always believed this. this. They always say this. When you, when you got a team, let them play. I'm going to let you play. You go play. One at a time. Eleven games they had set it, and for eleven games they believed in it. One at a time brought the Sun Devils to Pasadena, to the Rose Bowl, and possibly to an undefeated season and the national championship. Over 100,000 fans packed the Rose Bowl New Year's Day. Could the Sun Devils do it, or would the Ohio State Buckeyes find a way to end the dream season? Keith Poole led the Pac-10 champs onto the field, and it was evident from the onset that the maroon and gold meant business. Back to throw as Jackson steps up. He's going to get sacked back inside the 15-yard line, and down he goes at the 13. But Stanley Jackson and the Buckeyes bounced back and struck first. Throws it to the goal line, and it is caught in the end zone. Let's see, what are they ruling down there? They say it's, caught. it's a touchdown. As ASU's offense sputtered, the defense had to pick up the slack. Jackson sacked by Mitchell Friedman at the 40-yard line. Trailing 7 to nothing, Jake the Snake found his rhythm and got the Sun Devils on the board. It is caught for the touchdown by Ricky the Rocket Boyer. Wide receiver Ricky Boyer's 25-yard diving grab tied the score at 7 and moved Sun Devil quarterback Jake Plummer into first place on the all-time ASU touchdown list with 65. The score remained tied into the third quarter, and then Plummer hit tight end Steve Bush, who rumbled for 23 yards down to the Buckeye 13-yard line. After the Sun Devils failed to put it in the end zone, Robert Neese gave ASU its first lead of the game with a 37-yard field goal midway through the third quarter. But the Buckeyes got the lead back under a minute later when Joe Germain's play action faked out the cameraman and the Sun Devils. He hit Demetrius Stanley for a 72-yard touchdown. The Buckeyes were back on top 14 to 10. Later in the quarter, Jermaine went to the play action again, and it looked like Ohio State had seven more. But the Maroon Monsoon had taken care of business. He's back to throw. He is sacked and smoked at the five-yard line by Mitchell Friedman. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, Ohio State tried to extend the lead, but as he has done all season, senior Brent Bernstein blocked the field goal try. Derek Rogers scooped up the lateral and headed for the end zone. Officials ruled, however, that Rogers received an illegal forward pass and placed the ball at the spot of the infraction. Trailing 14 to 10 with just over two minutes remaining, Jake Plummer was asked to bring his team back. Could he do it again? Buckeye show blitz, Plummer back to throw. Plummer's gonna go deep side of the field for Jackson inside the 10 yard line. He's got it! He's knocked down at the eight yard line! Kenny Mitchell on the near side of the field. 
Here's the snap. Back to throw. Plummer chased out of the pocket again. Plummer's going to run. Plummer's on the 10. Plummer's on the 5. He scores! He scores! He scores! The Buckeyes got the ball back with a minute 30 left in the game and aided by two Sun Devil pass interference calls, found themselves in a position to win the Rose Bowl. Ohio State was first in goal from the five with 19 seconds to go. Jermaine to throw again. Looks, got the time, throws right side. The ball is caught by Boston. He scores. The Sun Devils were fighting to the final gun, but this time they came up empty. Final score, Ohio State 20, Sun Devils 17. There is no consolation for the Sun Devils, who were just a minute and 30 seconds away from victory and a shot at their first national championship. But as one of the greatest Rose Bowl games in history is remembered and talked about, so will the philosophy and creed which inspired the Arizona State Sun Devil football team, one at a time. One at a time brought them to Pasadena, and one at a time will bring Coach Bruce Snyder and the Sun Devils back. People try to, try to say it's been magical or that we're living in a dream, but you know, we've gone out and played hard, and uh, it's what you want, it's what you want as a player, and as, especially as a senior, to go out on a team that it has so much heart, so much pride, and plays so hard every single snap. It's been a great season. Every, every game's been memorable. I don't know if I could have visualized this whole season as, as it went on. I don't know if the national championship was a, was a thought. Uh, Rose Bowl was definitely in my mind. And um, I guess it, it was a couple of surprises in the season. 95% of the coaches in America have not had this. Uh, maybe even larger number than that. So it is a dream. It, uh, and dream not in terms of mystical or destiny, but a dream in terms of a group of people saying, why don't we go try to do this and then work hard at it and have it happen? Which is a great life lesson, by the way. I mean, my gosh, how many times uh, should people say, this is what I want to do and then work hard at it? I mean, that's what they should do. Uh, a lot of times you don't achieve, but, but the only way you're going to achieve is by trying that. One at a time, Destination Pasadena, the official Arizona State University football highlight video, has been presented by KTAR 620 AM, the first name in news. By Tribune Newspapers, serving the East Valley and Scottsdale. And by Fox Sports Arizona, home team, Fox Attitude.